Which you guys, today we're taking a look at how to build an awesome AMD 8700G home theater mini PC for your home. You can also use this for gaming if you want, but inside here we're going to be putting the brand new Ryzen 8700G. This is the brand new release from uh, AMD and we're going to be using that in this build. It has got its own GPU in here, which is pretty awesome. We're also using this little mini HTPC uh, case here, which is called the A. 02 mini case i'll try and leave all the links in the video description for the power supply we are needing something a little bit special here so we're going to go for the silverstone fx 350-g this is a 300 watt power supply because we're not putting a gpu in here we don't need that much power also getting this two terabyte uh, nvme drive here and also the vengeance rgb ddr5 memory for amd supported uh, motherboards here so we're going to be using that also tl b8 fans here these are from thermal light these are 80 millimeter fans they did send me the wrong actual cooler here for this i did pay for all this myself none of this is sponsored and uh basically they've sent me the wrong cooler so i need to get a new one of those the motherboard is this one here which i've used before and it was sitting around doing nothing so i wanted to get use of this so i've managed to utilize this now with this setup here so i'll be using this itx board here and uh, it's a pretty expensive board, but it is a, a decent board nevertheless. This video has been sponsored by our longtime sponsor, CD Key Sales, and I'll be showing you in more detail how to purchase your Windows keys and Office keys and how to activate them a little bit later on in the video once we've built this PC. So stay tuned and watch the whole video for that. So that's what we're going to be using here. So first, let's prep the motherboard here. What we need to do is put in the CPU, and we're also going to be uh, putting in the memory and the SSD into the board here as well. So you can see these do have pins on these ones. Now these new AMD CPUs come with pins on the board, just like Intel do. And uh, here we have the AMD Ryzen 8700G. So let's slot that in. And uh, once we get this locked in, we will then be able to pull this little cover down here and pull the retention lever over and lock it into position the little plastic thing will pop off and you can keep that to one side this is not the right cover for this motherboard i just had it laying around and wanted to protect the pins so let's remove this little cover here and we can now use our western digital black here this is the sn770 two terabytes on this one it should be plenty for what we're going to be using here and uh, we'll just put that into position like so and it doesn't need a screw because it has its own little catch here, which you can just pull over and it will lock it into position. All we need to do then is put the cover back on. And once we've done that, that will all be finished. So make sure you remove the plastic from the thermal pad underneath that cover and then just screw it down. And we should be pretty much good to go. Just got to then put the cooler on and then put the memory in and we can just drop this into the motherboard. And uh, it's that simple. Now, once we've done this, what we're going to do is put the cooler on. Unfortunately, I can't use the cooler that uh, they sent me because it's the wrong cooler. And uh, I did ask for the AMD version. For some reason, I've received the Intel version for AM4, not AM5. So we're going to have to use this stock one. Hopefully, it's not too tall and it will fit in the case. If it's not, then I'll have to wait until I get another cooler. So I've just removed all of the protective bottom and we're just going to use this and put this into situ like so. Don't need to replace the back plate or anything like that. It does come with the CPU itself. Should be plenty adequate for this. And uh, But I will want to replace this at some point to try and get cooler temperatures. So let me go ahead and uh, screw this down. And it's just four screws. And I'm just going to go round in a diagonal. And that's now done. And all we need to do now is I'm using this memory here. 32 gigabytes kit, this one. This is 6,000 megahertz, which should be plenty for what we've got here you can get faster speeds nowadays uh, but this will be adequate for what i need rgb on this one i was trying to get uh, ram without rgb unfortunately i didn't have none in stock so i had to get the rgb ones you're not really going to see it underneath here but this is the actual case here aluminium case a very nice uh, looking case so i'm just going to remove this lid and there we have the brace right across there nice little brushed aluminium look on there now, this part in the middle is the uh, part that's going to be holding the SSDs. If you want to put SSDs on here, you can do. Again, that will restrict airflow a little bit because the CPU cooler is going to be right underneath there. So 
Not too sure whether that would be a good uh, idea to put SSDs on there, but that would be something for another video. I'm not going to be populating that. You've got your USB 3.0 cable here, your audio cable, and your front uh, cables for the front control panel on the motherboard there for the buttons, for the power button and stuff. You can fit 80 millimeter fans on here to put some air into the case. There's room for a GPU in this little case as well. And there's also room for that little small special power supply that you need to use for this particular build. It is a very small case and it's going to be pretty tight to get everything in here because I didn't buy a modular power supply because they were super expensive for those particular ones. So I've gone with the non-modular one, which is this one right here from Silverstone. And again, even this was around about, I think it was 80 pounds or something like that. I can't remember. I got a pretty good deal on it. They are pretty expensive, these particular power supplies. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to quickly show you the connectors it has on this one here. I wanted to make sure I had a PCI Express uh, cable on here, just in case I want to add a graphics card to this at a later date. Unfortunately, I think that wattage is only 350 watts, so... There's not going to be a lot of room for a graphics card to be added to that power supply. So I may need to update that if I was going to add a graphics card at some point. But other than that, let's go ahead and get this prepped and get it inside here. Now, there's not a lot of room inside these. So everything is going to have to be done, uh, you know, in a certain way. So here is the little power supply. They're amazing, these little things, uh, how much power they can uh, deliver. And uh, again, you can see all the cables on the end. They are braided cables, but... Again, it's not modular, which is something I should have probably gone for. And if you are buying this, uh, I would definitely go for the modular one. You can replace the fans on these if they get a little bit too loud. If you want to quieten it down, you can get the uh, Noctua fan and replace that on there. If you want to see a video on that, let me know in the comments section below. I'll be able to make a video on that for you to quieten down these sort of power supplies because they do spin up a little bit when they're under full load. So what I'm doing here is just undoing all of the cables so I can uh, get the power supply into the case. Now, there's not a lot of room in here for cable management. So like I said, a modular one would have been probably better uh, to go for. But obviously, I was trying to keep the cost down. And uh, now we've got a big watch of cables to deal with. But we'll see what we can do here. Now, I'm going to try and plug these cables in outside of here just to make it a little bit easier rather than trying to do it inside the case because... You know, I've got pretty big hands and uh, things get a little bit tight in these uh, cases. So I'm going to just try and plug it in outside here. It's only your CPU cable and your 24 pin, but that's now done. We've got it all uh, inside the case. And what I'm going to do is now screw the motherboard down. Now, I'm hoping we can get all these cables tidied up in here. I've managed to tighten these down and uh, we're going to try and squeeze them in down this side here. There is no ventilation at the front here, so it should be OK. And hopefully that brace across the top there will hold it into position. You don't need to put the brace on if you don't want to. Uh, that's going to be holding the SSDs if you want to use those. This cable I can tuck down this side down here. Put a cable tie on here and hopefully that should be adequate. Now you can put more cable ties on here if you want to. Just trying to uh, put a place where we can put these cables because there ain't a lot of room inside here. And hopefully this will be okay. Now we are going to be putting two 80 mil fans on here and they are quite thick fans. So if you was populating the GPU area here with a, a dual uh, GPU here, a little small low profile one with these fans in here would make it quite tight. So you might need to do a little bit of research here, whether you'll be able to use the thick fans like these, or you might need to find some slimmer fans and you can buy them half the size of these. They're a bit more expensive which you might be able to use to try and get some airflow in there. But remember, you're going to have your GPU going along there if you was using a GPU in your build. I'm not using a GPU in here because we have the 8700G. And this is the TLB8. These are thermal light fans here. And they're pretty cheap. You can buy these for a pretty cheap price. And uh, just adds a little bit of airflow in here. Just got to tighten the screws down. But we're going to have these as blowing air in have no extraction in here because obviously the vents on the top should help dissipate heat because heat rises and that should be perfectly fine and again it's not the best cable management because i haven't put all of the cable ties on yet i've only put just one on each one just to test first i don't want to 
you know, tighten everything right down really tight until I've finally done my tests. But other than that, we'll take a look at it with a, the cover on top. Now we can. Now that does sort of restrict the airflow a little bit on the CPU cooler there with that brace on there. So you can take that out if you wanted to, if you're not using it. And I will do if I find that airflow is being restricted because if you was going to be putting SSDs across the top there, that would restrict airflow to your CPU cooler. So it's not the best design in that sense. So you have to think about it if you need more SSDs to be put in here. There's no room for three and a half inch drives, uh, but you could use your motherboard. This motherboard does have, I think, two NVMe slots on here. So you could buy a extra storage on here. And uh, that's basically what you're looking at right now with it looking like this. So pretty compact and pretty tight in here. And uh, yeah, you've got room for your uh, GPU down there. But like I've said, you need to work out something with your fan configuration here. Uh, cables are a little bit compact in here. Uh, but like I said, if you went and got a modular power supply, a lot of this could be reduced down quite a bit. And uh, But they are a lot more money than modular power supplies for this particular uh, model. Anyway, we've got the top on and we'll test the temps another video and I'll also do some benchmarking and stuff. What I want to do is show you basically where I get all of my product keys and office product keys and how you can activate them in this video because that's what people ask me all the time. Do I actually use these keys myself? And I do. There's nothing wrong with these keys. They will activate your version of Windows and they will also activate your office if you want to use Office. And that's, of course, today's video sponsor, CD Key Sales, as we mentioned at the beginning of the video. We need to do here is create an account and then search for what you want to search for, or you can use the links in the video description. And once you've chosen what you want to purchase, you just click on them, add them to cart, and purchase them via PayPal. So I'll quickly show you here. If you want to purchase, say, Windows 11 Pro, you just click Buy Now. You can use my promo code capital B capital R 09 and apply that to your order and you will get a discount uh, on your purchase. You can see 32 US dollars. It's now 22 US dollars. So you would get that discount and you can click submit order. And what you can do is then pay by PayPal and they will then send you the key to your account and you can use those to activate. I'll show you how to do that in a second. You go ahead and search for office here. I'm going to go ahead and put office in the top search and all you need to do here is click on whatever one you want to get so for instance this one right here for 2021 click on buy now and you can then use my promo code same thing and you would then get a discount as well and you'll definitely get a better discount than that 20 percent is i think it's 30 to 35 percent off i think so click capital b capital r09 apply that to your order and then you will then get a massive discount, as you can see here. And then once you're happy with that, you can then submit your order and then use PayPal to pay for it. So let me go ahead and show you that part. So click on this, use PayPal and sign into your PayPal account and literally pay now and you should be good to go. So to activate your version of Windows, all you need to do is head over to the start button here, click on your settings and from settings, you would then go to uh, system and then activation so let me go ahead and head over to system you can see this is not activated here we can cl click on activation here this will pop up this box where it says change product key enter the product key that you've just purchased and then click on next here and once you click on next it's going to move you on to the next step to activate windows so let me go ahead and show you that part then click on activate and this should activate windows just like you can see right on the screen right there no problem at all so that's now activated we can click close and if you head back over to cd key sales website here and look in your purchase orders you'll see all your orders that you've just purchased and you'll then be able to use these keys uh, to activate your version of office so head over to https colon forward slash setup dot office dot com and then sign into your account with your Microsoft account. Make sure you have a email account. If you want to use Office, this is how you're going to do it. If you don't have one, you can then create an account by clicking on create a new account. I'm going to sign in because I do have an account. So I'm going to go ahead and click on sign in. And this will check 
and uh, you will see here it's checked my sign in here it's asking me to enter the product key and this is for my office that I'm going to do here so let me go ahead and put in the office key into that box and then when we click next it will check that key to make sure the key is legit and you can see the region I'm going to be using uh, United Kingdom but you would choose the region you live in so I've already got the key pasted in here and once we're done here I'm going to click next and this will then check the key to make sure it's a legit key you can see the wheel going round and once it's done you can see product key confirmed office uh, professional plus 2021 so you know you've got a legit key there all you need to do now this is tied to your Microsoft account you can then click on confirm and this will confirm what you're doing and you can see get your apps and it's going to then take you to the place where you can then download the actual app so now you're in your account here what you'll need to do here you can see a list of them right here in your services and subscriptions so make sure you're in services and subscriptions of your account and choose which you want to download you can see i've used these before for 2016 2019 and now i'm using 2021 office professional plus so all you need to do here is you can click on uh, the install and it will give you the install for that particular file so let's go ahead and do that so let's click on install and this will give you the file it's now going to say choose your language and you can also see choose the version so we have got the right version here and we can click on install and it will install it onto the pc you can use the drop down arrow here if you want to to choose 32 bit or 64 bit or you can use the offline installer depending on which way you want to go about doing it so let's go ahead and choose uh, the offline installer and we're going to click install and this will allow you to download the file just like so and it's bringing down the image of this which means you can then use this at a later date you can use whatever method you'd like but we've now got that down if you want the installer you can just click on the install and choose the version you want for instance the default installer or 64 bit right here and this will also let you download the installer so let's go ahead and do that and we can use that to install it on this system so i'm going to go ahead and choose that click install and you should see a different file coming down so we're downloading the image and we're also now downloading the actual installer so that is the office image which you can install from from ventoy or usb flash drive and this is the actual office setup.exe file which you would then click on and click on continue and you'll see something like this where you can click on continue and it will install office on that system for you very simple and easy to do once you've done this it will install this and you can quickly click on activate and it's then linked to your microsoft account so anytime you have any issues you can then uh, reinstall it just remember you can only install this on one computer at any one time if you start installing it on different systems uh, it will install but you would end up getting flagged and it will kill that key because it will see it's being used multiple times so make sure you're only installing it on one system and again once you've done this you can see you're all set office now installed click close and take a look and i'll show you exactly uh, what it does when it notice that you've got either a new computer now remember uninstall it and deactivate it on your account if you've got it on an old computer so it's going to check your account right here and you can see it's picking it up here on this computer for use on one computer it tells you right there so if you've got it on an old computer and you're now trying to install it on a new computer make sure you take it off of that old computer first in your account and then reinstall it on a new computer office has now been updated please restart and we're going to do that click close and we are now good to go so i can now click close and we are done office has been updated i've updated office anyway that's it that's basically how you can build yourself a home theater pc and also install windows and activate it and also activate your version of office on that pc if you need to and also i'll be doing some benchmarks and other stuff with that system doing some temps for you guys in up and coming videos so stay tuned for that anyway my name has been brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk i shall catch you in the very next video or i'll see you on the discord server for a chat bye for now